different numbers. I was in Cabell County. They had about 70 new teachers, but some counties uh, had over, you know, they had large layoffs last year because they had um, more teachers than they needed. Um, so we had layoffs that we were faced with the last school year at the end of the year, and some counties were down. Uh, as to the number of teachers they actually needed this year and and the same with service personnel but that number won't really be available until the what's called the second month report which happens uh, with the state department in october but i i do know i heard uh, in your area superintendent Sachs speaking one day and i think berkeley county had uh, about a hundred and i want to think it was like a hundred and eighty uh yeah, I think you said about 170, and about half of those were, were just not certified. They might have been right, retired teachers right. or things like that. So we still have a shortage. I don't know that it's going to be as uh, high as it was last year. Last year we had over 1,700. Of course, you know that as serving as a delegate on uh, House Education Committee. We had over 1,700 teachers that were teaching outside of, you know, long-term subs teaching outside of their certification. I think... I've heard rumors that that m number may be down a little bit this year to more like 1,500, but that's still too many. Matt? Uh, Fred, um, when we talk about um, new teachers coming in, uh, are, are there more and more students or are, are we getting, are, are, are we steady, are we growing, I guess, the number of students who uh, go into college saying, I want to be a teacher? I know that that number seems like it had been going down. Are, are we evening out or maybe looking to, to get on the rise? Well, Matt, uh, that number is still down, but it is hopeful. I know some of the programs that are being offered to uh, high school students, like the Grow Your Own program that is from the um, State Department, where we are in trying to engage uh, juniors and seniors in the profession, give them some college courses so they can have a jump start. I think that is helping. I know the... Um, legislature uh, funded the uh, Underwood Smith scholarship program which has helped I think uh, according to Chancellor Tucker um, from the Higher Education uh, Policy Council um, we have about five cohorts now uh, and this year the first cohort of those students are or maybe it's the second year that they're they're now teaching so that's been helpful to try to attract uh, young people into this profession but we still have a ways to go because let's face it we are not offering competitive salaries here in the state like some of the other states are offering uh, so we have a ways to go but I'm very hopeful that we're on the right track to answer your question is there a an average amount of time right now that most teachers are are in the business so to speak in other words are you seeing maybe young teachers come in and in years past they might be around for 25 or 30 years and retire as a teacher but now you're seeing them last maybe four or five or six years and are ready to try something different yeah that that is a sad fact uh, it usually from what the latest that I've been able to uh, ascertain is about 50% or more of young teachers leave the profession within the first five years. Um, some of that is they just move away to other states with uh, a spouse um, to get another job or uh, they go into administration because you can make more money and as an administrator than you can as a classroom teacher. So they're, they're looking for other ways to increase their income. Um, and some are just finding out, you know, early on, this is not for me. Uh, and that's unfortunate. We still have an issue with discipline. Um, you know, that, that is scaring some people away. I've talked to young teachers that get very disappointed because they just can't handle it. Um, the, the discipline issues are starting uh, what we're seeing at a much younger age in the, in the early childhood grades, uh, kindergarten and first grade, and it's very discouraging. So that's part of the problem. There are many elements that, that figure into this. But, um, yes, unfortunately, too many leave too early. 
Bill? So, so good morning. <laughs> I don't know what we got going on with Bill's. Try again, Bill. Okay. Yeah. Um, how about now? We'll try. Oh, there you go. There. Now we got you. We got you on finally. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to see if this works anyway. Um, so you know the the benefits for I'm sure as an educator um, are e extravagant, um, but. As you mentioned about salaries, what do you think can be done to get those salaries increased so we can attract more teachers for the state? Well, I think we need to look at the difference that's being paid. From, from what I read last year, what I found out last year, we still rank near the bottom, uh, maybe 50th, uh, as far as what we're paying the average teacher. Um, so that's, that's not helpful. Uh, we have to take a hard look at it. And I will say we're very appreciative of the raises that have been received in the last five years. But we have to stop and ask, is it enough? Is $2,500, $2,200 more a year enough to make a difference? And I know in your all's area especially, and we've talked about this many times before, a person can live in West Virginia, and in fact, some of our our members of AFT West Virginia have now left. They're still living in West Virginia, but they've traveled across the border to Maryland or Virginia, and they're making ten or fifteen thousand dollars more a year. And I can't blame them for doing that. Uh, so I think we have to look really hard at what it what would it take to make that difference. And, and I think can we do it? We're, we're giving a lot of money to new companies, from what I understand, to move here as far as tax breaks and incentives, uh, which is, I'm not complaining about that because we need more businesses here in West Virginia. We need more people. Uh, our population continues to decline. I saw a map yesterday where we're, we lead the nation in declining population. Uh, we need to do something that's going to attract more people Therefore, we would have more students in our schools, more families in our communities. But we've got to address this, is, it, this issue of a competitive salary. And the same for our service personnel. And I think the, uh, the issue is very similar to what many of us that work in other forms of local government has been requesting. When you're in this end of the state, and you, and you mentioned about the increase in salaries may be good for some of the counties, but when you're looking at the Eastern Panhandle specifically, we need to be looking more at, you know, enhanced sign-on bonuses. We need to be looking at locality pay, which I know is not a favorable term that people want to sit here about. But we need to look at that because our children are the ones that are, are, are suffering here because if we don't have adequate teachers per population, we're going to, they're going to, the students are going to suffer. So that, that's correct, and it's not it's not fair to the students. Uh, you know, I've often mentioned this before. I think in in one county in the southern part of the state, um, we've had students graduating from high school who have never had a certified math teacher. Um, they've had a teacher in the in the classroom doing their best to present lessons on math, but they're not. That's not their uh, expertise or their area of certification, and that's unfair to our students. You're exactly right. So, Fred, would you then, um, I mean, uh, what is your stance on locality pay or ge geographical uh, pay or some <laughs> kind of housing allowance for some well, of those areas that Yeah, uh, I, you know, I think we could look at other incentives. Perhaps a housing allowance would be nice, a tax break perhaps. But when you get into locality pay, would you, would you be able to, number one, offer enough more that would make a difference? Uh, and then would that cause an effect um, to lose people in other areas of the state moving to an area that's going to pay significantly more? I, I don't know. That's, that's, all of that has to be uh, considered. It's, it's a really slippery slope to go down. But... We need to do something. Uh, I would say we need to just look at uh, increasing the teacher salary across the state because others, other counties are suffering. We're suffering in special education. We can't attract enough special educators uh, in the field of special education, math, and science. Um, it, it's a difficult task, but it's one that I think we need to work together to, to tackle. Matt? 
Fred, are we not speaking the same language but just using different terms? Because when you say a housing allowance and we say locality pay, one of the biggest differences in the panhandle is the cost of housing. So if we offer a teacher in the panhandle $20,000 more a year because of the cost of housing, that's technically locality pay. Are we talking the same thing? Well, I don't know. Uh, I guess maybe the way you're looking at it, it could be. But if you're if you're giving someone uh, housing allowance, uh, that does increase their pay. But that that still, I don't know that that solves the problem. You know, for years, uh, here's a situation: there were Boone County, which borders Kanawha County. There were teachers who drove from Kanawha County to Boone County to teach because Boone County paid more than Kanawha County because of the coal severance tax brought in more money. Um, that was hard for some people to believe. And then that there was a period of time that dried up or it wasn't as much as it once was. And that caused another problem. Um, I just think that we need to sit down at the table and look at everything uh, to see what we can do to correct this problem. Fred, going back to what you said about uh, special education, what mm -hmm. do you think the reason is for the massive increase in the amount of students uh, who are, are special needs or have IEPs or things like that? Because the well, increase in the special needs student population has been pretty dramatic over the last few years. It has, and, you know, one of the things, uh, and I'm sure you are quite aware of this, fully aware of this, uh, as we've heard on the news recently, we still lead the nation in uh, drug abuse, drug cases, uh, opioid crisis, whatever you want to call it. We still lead the nation there. That has not been corrected, and I think that does contribute to uh, some of our students needing special help. Uh, but it, autism has, I think, identifying some of these uh, situations is more prevalent now than it has been in the past, but it definitely has increased. Uh, we need to look at that as well and, and, and get to the root cause of it. What can we do to help in those areas? Is it a health issue? Uh, is it a family issue? Um, so there's, there are many elements to that. Uh, situation that we need to identify and try to uh, give assistance. But with, you're right, it, it has increased dramatically. Fred, with the addition of the, the aids in the lower levels, um, legislation that was passed just a couple of years ago, we've now seen mm -hmm. it implemented. How is that impacting, number one, do you believe the classroom and helping those teachers on those levels, but also what impact is that having as far as trying to fill those roles as well as vacant teaching roles? Well, I've heard, I just recently heard uh, Superintendent Blatt address that issue, and, you know, last year was the first year. This year, uh, the aides are in second grade, and then next year it will be third grade. I hear that it is helping, but the situation there is it's getting hard to find people for those positions. Um, but where we have been successful in finding uh, people to serve in that position it has been helpful uh, it's a little early to tell exactly what the results are but from what I've heard so far in the first grade it has been very helpful and we're looking to have more success as it moves through the second grade this year and then third grade next year but a situation there was many um, of the service and I, I shouldn't say many but I do know that in the service personnel pool some um, of the service personnel transferred into those positions so that left an opening in the position that they left and those positions have been more difficult to to uh, fill but as far as student success i think we're on the right track i think it has been very helpful and very welcomed so fred let's talk let's talk moving forward i know you have a merger of the two unions uh coming in the next mm -hmm. year i believe Yes, what, what is uh, your role in, in that transition, and what will be your role be moving forward? Well, I am um, 
you know, working with uh, my counterpart, Dale Lee from WVEA, we're working. In fact, we have a meeting uh, later this morning. We have one of our first regional meetings today where we're meeting regionally with about in about 10 different areas. We'll be up in your part of the uh, state, I think, in September, I believe it's the 17th. Um, but we're meeting with uh, members uh, regionally. Tonight will be our first meeting here in Kanawha County, and hopefully we'll draw people from surrounding counties to come and ask questions and to, uh, to be given answers. But we are moving toward um, September of 2025. So my role is to you know, help facilitate this merger and do everything that I can as a state Fed president to make sure that we are on track. We have lots of deadlines to meet. Um, so we're working hard to make that happen. I think it's going to be a good thing for our state, for our teachers and our service personnel, and for our students ultimately, because we're looking for stronger public schools. And if we're all working together with one voice, um, it will be a stronger situation for our students. What's the major difference between the two unions right now, Fred? Well, one of the biggest differences, you know, if you're a member of um, AFT West Virginia, you're also a part of the AFL-CIO family. So that would be something that would be very strong for our new organization, which we don't have a name for it yet. We're still calling the West Virginia Merged Organization just as a, a placeholder for a name, but that's all uh, yet to come. But I think it would give strength uh, in that way. But I think as we have worked through these merger talks and as we've met with members, uh, we're more alike than we are different. Uh, and that's why we feel that we'll be stronger as one voice and one organization. So we have many more uh, likes, many more commonalities than we have differences. We're all in this for public education and for supporting our students and our families and our communities. Would the everyday teacher or member of your union uh notice the difference with the merger or is it the dues the same hopefully they will hopefully yeah. we'll be able to offer more things as far as professional development and and give things back to our members that they deserve i think that they will notice that we, we will be stronger together um so i uh and and there's many teachers in our state who do not belong to either aft or wvea and i think uh, the new organization hopefully would be attractive to them and they would want to join and be a member. So the, to answer that, we're very hopeful that a new organization would offer things that would be very attractive to non-members as, you know, potential members uh, and to our current members. In my experience, you and Dale do get along pretty well. Um, it, it, we try to. It, we actually walked in the uh, Marmette Labor Day Parade yesterday together, uh, handing out candy to the children who were there eagerly there uh, waiting for treats. Uh, so we, we do, uh, we get along very well. So what do you see moving forward, Fred? Well, you know, uh, we're looking for uh, just a great, uh, future. We're looking for a lot of successes, and we're looking uh, to make public education uh, stronger in West Virginia and, and making it so that people will want to enter the profession and our schools will become stronger uh, with a lot more successes. Do you work well also with the service personnel union, right? They have a separate union from teachers. Yes, the West Virginia Service Personnel Association. We do. Joe White is the executive director, and, you know, we, we meet with Joe uh, occasionally, but, yes, we do work well with him. And that's not part of the merger, correct? The service personnel won't? No, they're, okay. they're, they're by themselves. Fred, anything else you want to... Um well, I tell our like audience I said, I, before we leave you. I, I, I can't think of anything, but it's uh, a pleasant day here in Charleston, and I hope it is there in your area of the woods. And I wish the, the best to Rob. I hope he is back uh, soon, but it was nice talking with you all, and I hope you have a great week. So I'm, I'm ready to go to another meeting. Fred, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you, Delegate. Thank you. And always, I always say hi to one of my friends there, Jackie Long, who serves on the uh, Board of Education. I know that she listens to the show frequently, so I hope Jackie's doing well. She's a lovely lady, she's, and she's, uh, she, works she hard. does a great job. She yeah. does a great job. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. Appreciate your time.